So let's get back to how we could solve this in Excel because typically we use this in Excel or other software tools rather than probability paper. We can use the norm.inverse function of our expected cumulative probabilities. So that goes in here with our mean and our standard deviation. And you see that we're estimating the mean and standard deviation based upon our sample statistics, X bar and S. The right column here then is the X value or the length that we would expect based upon those cumulative probabilities. So these are our expected values. In other words, if we chose 10 random fish, these represent the expected lengths based on the sample statistics and based upon expected cumulative probability. We can then take our observed length and our expected length and put them side by side in Excel and we can plot those. And we can ask ourselves when we plot observed versus expected or vice versa, you could do expected versus observed, does it lie close to the y equals x line? And if it does, then you can kind of conclude that these data are normally distributed. When we do that for our data, we end up with expected length on the y-axis, observed length on the x-axis. We see that they're very close to that y equals x line. I did this in Excel, and I just manually drew in, using the drawing tools, this y equals x line. So it appears that these data are normally distributed. Let me show you how we can generate these probability plots in Minitab. It's a lot easier to do this than in Excel. I'm over here on the remote desktop. I've opened up my fish probability data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this, control C. I'm gonna go over here to Minitab and I'm gonna paste it here. By the way, on my computer at least, I can't copy data from my computer and paste it onto the virtual desktop. I have to actually email data, uh, Excel files and open up the data. So it's a little bit frustrating, but it works. In Minitab, we can paste our data here in this spreadsheet-like environment. I can go up here to graph. We can go to probability plot. I can select single or multiple. I just have a single series, but later in the course, we might look at multiple series. Click OK. Now you have to select your column. This is column one. Click select. From this distribution button, you can select the type of distribution that you want to see if your data follows. And let's just do the normal distribution. I can click OK. There's some other options here that you can explore, but I'm just gonna click OK. And it churns through and it spits out a probability plot. At the top, that's the type of distribution we have. This is a normal distribution. These are known as 95% confidence intervals. You want your data to lie on a straight line within that 95% confidence interval. You also want this p-value to be high. Now this is in contrast to some other things we talk about in this class where you want the p-value to be high rather than small. So in this case, it looks like the assumption of normality is a pretty good one and our data follow a normal distribution. Let's look at a different type of distribution. I'm gonna select gamma distribution, click OK. We're gonna run this. It comes up with this probability plot. Likewise, we're getting all the data to lie along a nice straight line, more or less, inside this 95% confidence interval. The p-value is, again, really high. It's greater than 0.25. This means that we could use a gamma distribution to model our data quite well. It also spits out the shape factor and the scale factor in case you want to come up with an actual equation or calculate probabilities in Excel. Finally, let's look at a different type of distribution, maybe something that's quite different, the exponential distribution. Go ahead and run this. Minitab spits out a probability plot, an exponential distribution, and you see it does follow a straight line, but that straight line is not within the 95% confidence interval. The exponential distribution wouldn't be a good distribution to model our data. And the p-value here, here is very small. So again, you want the p-value to be pretty high in order for that distribution to model your data well. So hopefully you learned a little bit more about probability plots and how to make them in Excel and Minitab in this screencast. Thanks for watching.